<laughs> All right, you got me? Oh, we have you. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're very welcome. All right, we're gonna roll straight into questions so we can maximize the time that we have with Matt before this weekend's dirt race at Bristol. And if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand within the Zoom platform or send us a chat um, via the chat room. We will be sure to monitor that as well. And to kick off with our first question, we are gonna go to Bob Pockris. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Matt, what did you learn from that track last weekend that you think will apply to this week? I'm just seeing kind of what the track did throughout a run and just seeing what the track, how it changed. I mean, all tracks, all dirt tracks since the, I've been racing those last few years, they all changed. They all look a little different, how, where you can go and where you can't go and preferred lane and just seeing how much it would widen out. So definitely learn some stuff on it. I mean, do you think it, I mean, do you think it will widen out or? And it all depends if the track, uh, it'll widen out if the track uh, prep people let it. I mean, it showed that the other night. I mean, we ran three quarter way up to the fence. We ran on the bottom. I mean, we put on some amazing races. I mean, I don't know if you guys did watch it, the late models, the really, really fast stuff was more painted in the middle of the racetrack. But if if you want to call it more the, the hobby stop, the heavier cars, they put on probably the best race of the weekend. And at the end of the day, that's what the trucks and the cup cars are gonna be, they're the heavier vehicles. And they were three wide, four wide at points and door slamming each other. So should be exciting without a doubt. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Um, Matt, when you were running the trucks, you certainly work more on, on your dirt experience in, and kind of gaining a little bit more experience. Can you give me a sense of the challenge for drivers who don't have as much experience and, 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 you know, how I know every dri driver is different, but how, how long it takes to kind of uh, at least be good on, on this type of surface, if it's not your, your natural. Um, the biggest thing, it's one thing to be good on it. I mean, there's going to be some drivers when they go out there and the track is heavy and it's, we'll call it muddy at that point. It's got a lot of traction. Um, those are the easier tracks to drive. When the track slicks out and gets really, really slick and you're really struggling for traction, those are whenever you separate the guys that can drive the dirt and can't drive the dirt as much and where the experience, I should say, will pay off and understanding where you should be on the racetrack and where you shouldn't be. And that's what I've took to it. And I, I, I enjoy it so much because it's so different. It's something that I've never been, never raced much of in my life until I started racing around the truck. So I took it and started racing other people's cars and I fell in love with it and ended up buying my own car and spent a lot of time doing it. I mean, I think I've raced 15 races this year already on dirt. What do you think? Uh, I mean, how 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 big is the disparity going to be? Or in you know in in the truck races are a long enough gap, or even in the cup race with all the extra laps that somebody can 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 learn and at least kind of you know get through and score top ten. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, th these guys are all really really good race car drivers, and they're going to figure it out without a doubt. Um, I hope for the cup race sake and for the truck race sake that maybe at some point. Uh, that they'll maybe on one of the breaks that they work the track just a little bit at that point. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is it taking rubber is what they call it. And if it takes rubber, rubber, it will become a one lane racetrack at that point. So that's one of the things that I'll, I'll be pushing for them to be able to, on one of the breaks that we have, pit stop breaks that they go out there and work the track just a little bit, just to be able to get it where it's multi-group again. Thank you. Okay, our next question is gonna come from Kelly Crandall. Go ahead, Kelly. Thanks, Amanda. Hey, Matt, I just want to get your thoughts on, it's quite an extensive entry list this weekend and it's gonna be invaded by a lot of cup drivers. So thoughts on uh, all of those guys coming in and running with you. I'm not so much worried about the cup drivers. It's, it's, the, it's the dirt guys that you're a little bit more worried about. And this guy, same Kyle Larson, I think you'd probably be worried about that guy as well. He, I think he does a little bit of everything. So he's gonna be, one of the ones to beat without a doubt. Uh, I mean, freezing, he'll be really, really fast as well. So, um, you got Mike Marler, that he's a world outlaw dirt late model champion. So, you're gonna have a lot of really, really good drivers out there without a doubt. Thank you. 
Okay, our next question is going to come from Michael Shelton. Go ahead, Michael. Thank you very much. Well, Matt, you're a three-time Truck Series champion. You've had your share of big races over the years, but considering the fact that it's a Saturday night race on the dirt at Bristol Motor Speedway with so many of the big names in the Cup Series participating, uh, how would you? How big would you say this race is compared to other ones that you have competed in in the past in terms of exposure and how much your know, prestige of victory in this race would mean to you? Uh, I wouldn't mean. I mean, it, it's it's just gonna be a really cool race. I mean, the Cup guys entered her. It's gonna be cool to be able to race them. But at the end of the day, uh, I, I think they should be able to race with us every week, and that they should push for that. Um, I'm not one of the advocates that we're the only get to run what four or five races that I wish that Kyle could get to run more of them and Kevin would be able to run more of them and Kev Lasky, I used to love all that but uh, one of my biggest wins I can honestly say was Eldora whenever I won that race just because I put so much into it myself and I spent so much of my hard-earned truck money asphalt racing money to go buy a dirt car and try to perfect that and to be able to win that so that one is definitely one of my top wins without a doubt. And then it'd be awesome to be able to go to do it in, at Bristol, especially first time NASCAR being on Bristol with dirt. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right. Our next question will come from Lee Spencer. Go ahead, Lee. Thank you. And thanks for joining us, champ. Um, kind of curious, Austin Dillon was on with us yesterday and he said he didn't think that there was going to be a cushion forming at that track and I was there on Friday and it looked really dusty um, from where we were sitting. Are you kind of concerned about that as well? No, um, I, there's not going to be a cushion. I don't feel there, I mean, there's a difference in a cushion and widening out. I mean, it, it has, it's a finer dirt on there than Eldora. And Eldora, you build the big cushion up against the wall, and some of these places you build a cushion. It was, but you will widen out when the moisture starts drying up on the bottom. You start going to start looking for moisture, and it will widen out at that point. But I don't see a, a curb or a cushion, if you want to call it that, building. And, and what's but that doesn't mean it's not going to be wide and good side by side racing. What? What do you think about the um, return to Toyota as far as Thor Sport is concerned? Do you feel like you're getting a little more support from the manufacturer end? I, I love, I mean, love the Toyota people and everybody at TRD, all the tools they give us. I, mean, I spent so much time on the simulator this year, all the sim stuff they give us. And it's amazing to have what we've learned already this early in the year, just making our stuff better and better. And we still, and we see how much better we can still get. So everybody at TRD, it's, it's truly amazing all the tools that they give you to make you be able to win races. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Ashley McCubbin. Go ahead, Ashley. Hey, Matt, thanks for your time today. You talked about continuing to improve the program. What would you grade your uh, performance so far as this year? I'd give it a, I'd give it a C. I mean, at best, I mean, we, we haven't led the laps or that we wanted. I mean, I think we led one, but we've been decent, but we haven't been great, but we know the areas that we need to keep working on and junior and every one of these guys and Duke and Ronda are giving us all the, the go ahead to go get it and keep working on it. So that's what we're doing. And I, I think you're going to see us keep getting better and better. And we see a lot of focus being put on the event this weekend. With what that, was that? I couldn't hear you. Sorry about that. We see a lot of focus being put on the event this weekend. Why do you feel that it seems when whether it be cup or truck go to dirt, there's so much emphasis on it, even though it's only one event of many in the schedule? Um, I think because it's something you can't go to the simulator. It's not something that we've ever done. Majority of all the NASCAR drivers have no dirt background or virtually no dirt background. So whenever there's something like this that comes up, you better figure it out. And because that one race could at the end of the day land you in the in the chase and be able to fight for championships. So that's why you see so many people going off and driving different dirt cars to try to get that experience. We don't need that experience when we go to Bristol 
or Atlanta or anything like that because we've all been there and we've all raced on asphalt racetracks. We all haven't raced on dirt. Thank you for your time. Welcome. All right. And Matt, before we let you go, I'm going to take a question here um, from the chat. Um, let's see here. The question is, um, do you have any takeaways from winning the dirt race at Eldora in 17? And what are your thoughts on having um, as many cup drivers in the truck race in terms of exposure? Go ahead. I, I think it's good uh, that we have as many cup drivers in it because it does help. I mean, the cup guys have a lot of fan base and for them to be able to come run the truck races, it's great. Like I said earlier was I wish they would come do it more and get it more exposure and be able to race and compete against those guys. At the end of the day, the kids that are wanting to go cup racing, they better be able to learn how to race and be able to beat those cup guys. And if you can't learn to beat them in the truck series, I guess you don't need to move up. All right, Matt, we appreciate your time. I have a couple other interviews um, that you have to get to now, but thank you again for joining us and we wish you uh, the best of luck this weekend. You're welcome. Thank you.